Module 4, Design Vehicle Accommodation. Large trucks, buses, and emergency vehicles often dictate many of the roundabout's dimensions, particularly with single-lane roundabouts. The design vehicle should be identified at the start of a project, and the design vehicle should be evaluated early in the design process. Left turn movements typically determine the circulatory roadway and truck apron widths. Right turn movements typically determine the entry and exit widths. Buses should generally be accommodated within the circulatory roadway without tracking over the truck apron. We don't want to have vehicles or buses go around the circulatory roadway and have to feel that bump as they go over the truck apron. So roundabouts on the state highway system, it's desirable to accommodate the WB62FL for all movements. And for most single lane roundabouts, this should, should not be a problem. You should be able to accommodate that. But at a minimum, we're going to want to accommodate that, that 62FL for the through movements on the state highway system. And you may have a smaller design vehicle for the through movements on the minor road or turning movements to and from the minor road. One important thing is you really have to understand your users. Who goes through this intersection? Is there a large industry nearby that has oversized overweight loads or maybe some sort of permitted vehicles that need to be accommodated with your design? Last thing you'd want to do is have a roundabout get designed, opened up, and then have a, a larger vehicle stuck in your roundabout. Let's take a closer look at this WB62FL, and this is from AutoTurn. The overall uh, vehicle length of the, the 62FL is 73.5 feet. And for the tractor here, uh, it's eight, and a half, or eight feet wide. When we take a look at the, the trailer portion of, of the truck, it does get a little bit wider at eight and a half feet for those rear wheels. We're going to use a CAD-based computer program. Uh, to determine the swept paths of the design vehicles through each of the turning movements. We're going to develop natural paths using continuous smooth alignments representative of actual travel paths. We're going to provide adequate pavement widths to accommodate the design vehicle within the travel lane. And we're going to provide a minimum of 18 inches of clearance between curb faces and the outside edge of the design vehicle's tracks. Here's an example of a well-designed smaller, a little bit smaller single lane roundabout, but you can see that it still does accommodate the WB62FL. And on the entry here, you can see that there is no, no over tracking of the gutter. Uh, the vehicle follows this, this radius into the circle. The truck does, does over track onto the truck apron, which is what you want. But again, no, no tracking into gutter on the outside as well as they go through, go through the roundabout. So this, uh, this roundabout does accommodate the 62 FL very well. Next, uh, so that was the left turns. Take a look at the through movements. And again, you can see no over tracking of the gutters on the entry uh, circulating. They do not uh, use the truck apron to the tractor portion of the truck does not use the, the truck apron, but the rear wheels of the truck does as it goes through. And again, there's no, no over tracking on the exit as well. And as vehicles are making a right turn, again, you can see that there's no overtracking into the gutters on the entry here or on this uh, truck apron in the center island. Zoomed in a uh, look at a well-designed entry and exit combination for a single lane. Again, the, the left front is going to come close to this gutter here but not track over tr or track into it and then it as it continues through is going to get close to the to the truck apron here and then also close on the exit there but again not getting into the gutter and you can see that this entry of the roundabout the the radiuses are designed to accommodate this WB62 FL We're going to quickly walk through setting up AutoTurn in MicroStation. So the first thing we're going to do is open a design file. We're going to click on Utilities. We're going to hit the Browse button. And we're going to find this 
at8i.ma file. And you can see most, most times it's underneath your C drive here. Once auto turn is open, uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, some of the, the tools on the left side of the, the bar here. The first one that we're going to look at, A is properties, B is vehicles, C is generate arc path, and D is place adaptive simulation. If we click on that uh, properties button, we, we can go in and, and click on these different categories. The one on the left here is, is general, and you can see the different options that you have there. Vehicles, the different options of what you're going to display once you uh, plot out that vehicle path in auto turn. Envelopes have quite a few more options there. You can follow what is shown here or, or use whatever you feel is appropriate. When we click on the, the B one there, the, the Vehicles button, you'll have the ability to select a wide variety of vehicles. Under the FLPPM 2013, there is the WB62FL that we will be utilizing, the one that we discussed earlier. So we're going to go through placing an adaptive simulation, and this is actually the, the one that I like to use the most because it gives me flexibility, and when I go through multiple iterations of the design, I found this to be the easiest and provides the best, smoothest, uh, most natural paths. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create the turning path consist, consisting of individual lines and arcs. We're going to offset the edge of gutters maybe four and a half to five feet. Remembering that the design vehicle should stay out of all gutters 1.5 feet minimum from that face of curb. Once we have these lines and arcs placed, we can use the Create Complex Chain tool, and that's going to provide one complex chain element. After we've done that, we can click on the Place Adaptive Simulation icon. We'll select that turning path, the one that we've just completed, and we want to select the beginning of the path to determine the direction of the vehicle will travel. And once that's done, we're going to select OK to place the adaptive simulation. We'll walk through an instructor example here. I'm going to go ahead and open up MicroStation and walk through how to place an adaptive simulation and run your auto turn vehicle. I've gone ahead and opened up uh, our CAD file that we're going to take a look at here and run through our example. So let's go through and place a path that we want our truck to follow. So I'm going to go ahead and offset my entry here, which is, is 12 feet wide on the approach. I'm going to offset six, just kind of split that lane. I'm going to offset five feet from this edge of pavement. I'm going to do that from the circulatory roadway or the truck apron curb and gutters well there, five feet, and then five feet on the exit as they head out. I'm going to go ahead and connect that. So as they're approaching, they'll, they'll go ahead and follow this line. I'm going to put a tangent line or line in between those two tangent that I'm going to then connect up. I'm going to take this arc and extend it into the circle. I'm also going to extend this one up. You can see that the arc extended through hits this five foot offset. And so that's a nice, nice uh, design element for your roundabout. I'm going to put in a, uh, a fillet here. I'm just going to do a 50 foot fillet between those two. And you can see that it does get pulled off of the, off the circle a little bit, which, which is fine. So now that I've got this path drawn that I want it to, to follow, I'm going to go ahead and use this create complex chain. And have it do automatic. I'm going to pick it from the beginning and you can see that it goes all the way through and highlights that. And now this is all one, one element that the truck will follow. I have my truck selected here under the, the WB62FL. For some reason it just says L but it is the, the FL uh, truck. Hit OK. And then I can go up to this button here and do the place adaptive simulation. And you're going to want to start at the beginning of this line. You can go ahead and click it. 
and it goes ahead and draws in the truck. And then you can go ahead and hit OK to that. So what you're going to do is you'll then go take a closer look at your truck and make sure you're not getting into any gutters or uh, over tracking any areas. And you can see that as it goes through this entry, it's it's not getting into the, the gutter on the left side and it's not over tracking into the right side gutter. We're staying away from the center island curb and gutter, not getting into that. And then as it heads out the exit as well. So you can see that this, this roundabout, or this entry is well designed and even that this radius here is following nicely along that, that particular path. So that's an eastbound right turn. Let's go ahead and draw in uh, eastbound through movement. So I'm just going to uh, switch to a different level here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy the one that I just drew. And I'm going to change that to my new level. And I'm going to turn off that, that right turn, that right turn movement then. Oops. Didn't need to turn all that off. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and just go in and explode that one, or drop it, I should say, and just delete some of these lines that I don't need. So I've got the beginning part of my my entry that I uh, want, or the path that I want to follow. So I'm going to go ahead and offset six feet here, or five feet, or whatever whatever you feel like you want to use. I know the circle is sized. Uh, and is large enough that I can have a little bit larger offsets with it. I'm going to do six feet on the exit here as well. Connect those up. And then go ahead and draw a tangent between these two arcs. Trim that up a little bit. Then I'm going to go and extend these two. And you can see that they obviously don't, don't hit very well. So I'm going to do another fillet of, of a 50 feet in between those. So the, there's a nice smooth path for, for that truck to follow. I'm going to create a complex chain again, do that, and then run my truck over that and hit OK to it. Go back in, take a look. The, the entry really should be, should be about the same. You can see the truck goes through. Just a little bit of the, the tires get onto the truck apron curb. They don't even need to get onto the apron really in order to get through, at least the way we've currently got it drawn. And then on the way out, the exit of plenty of space for, for that truck to, to get through here. So again, accommodates the through movement quite well. I am going to now show the eastbound uh, left turn movement. So I'm going to go into and switch my levels again. This time I'm going to do the eastbound left. I'm going to copy, copy this through movement, and then change the level on that, and turn the other ones, the other ones off here, and maybe I've got this one on the wrong layer here level. Let me just turn. There we go. Turn that one off there. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and drop, drop this, and delete, delete some lines here. I can take this uh, arc that I had offset from the circle previously, extend that around, offset this, the exit six feet again. Connect those up. Draw a tangent in between these. And there I should have a, a nice left turn path. So I'll go ahead and connect or create a chain for that one and then run my truck through there. Again, the entrance stays the same. Now, as this truck does make a left turn, the rear wheels do get onto the truck apron as we'd want them to, but plenty of space on the exit heading out here as well. So that was the, the left turn. Previously, we did the right turn, and then we also did the through as well. So you can see that all three vehicles, or all three movements are accommodated with this single lane design. So therefore, uh, we should feel good that this is a good solid, solid design. So that concludes this uh, tutorial, and we'll head back into the presentation. Design vehicle accommodations for multi-lane roundabouts. 
Consideration should be made for both tracking on the entry exit and within the circulatory roadway. The percentage of trucks in lane utilization is an important consideration, as well as the frequency of a specific design vehicle is also an important consideration. So you may have a large percentage of trucks, but if they're all dump trucks, that's a lot different than having a large percentage of WB62FL type design vehicles. So we're also going to want to determine whether the design will allow trucks to use two lanes on the entry or accommodate them to stay within their own lane. There are three different uh, options for accommodating the design vehicle for multi-lane roundabouts. We'll start with the case one design and that has single lane line dividing the entry lanes. So you can see there's no pavement marking gore or anything on, on this entry. There's just a single single line here. And trucks encroach on that adjacent lane on the entry and when circulating and exiting. So in order for this truck to get through this particular entry, they need to cross over that pavement marking on the entry uh, as well as circulating and many times on the exit as well. So that is a case one design. Case 2 design has a wider entry with a gore marking. So you can see there is a gore here on the entry, which provides extra space for a truck entering. So that truck does stay in their lane on entry, but the truck does encroach, again, within the circulatory roadway here onto the adjacent lanes when circulating and potentially exiting. Depending on the exit uh, design you have, you may not have encroachment on the exit. And then finally, the case three design, as, I'm, as you're probably guessing, has a wider entry with that gore marking again. So we've got the truck accommodated on the entry here. You can see that they do not need to encroach within the circulatory roadway or on the exit now. So this is a larger case three design. So as you go from a case one to case two to case three, your circles tend to get larger. The circulatory lane widths get a little bit larger. The entries may get larger, which means uh, many times that your design is going to become faster. So there's definitely a trade-off depending on the type of accommodations that you provide for your design vehicle. This is a good example that shows a two-lane entry that has pavement marking gore area provided between the two lanes on the approach. Many times the outside lane is going to be wider than the inside lane. Uh, trucks that use the inside lane have the ability to, to use this truck apron in here. So this lane can be smaller and I would recommend it should be smaller. And then the outside lane here uh, many times, again, is, is larger to accommodate the vast majority of the trucks that'll be, be in that right lane if they're driving through through the roundabout. Let's take a look at the, the FDOT policy for multi-lane roundabouts and the design vehicle accommodations. And that is to provide adequate pavement area for the simultaneous passage of the design vehicle and a passenger vehicle through the roundabout and for turning movements. Design vehicle swap paths must stay within the travel lanes without encroaching on the inside and outside gutters. And we're going to provide a minimum of 18 inches of clearance between curb faces and the outside edge of the design vehicle's tire track. The Florida DOT policy also allows the truck trailer uh, to mount that RA curb and use the truck apron. We're going to develop swept path diagrams for all turning movements in the following combinations. We're a design vehicle on the outside lane and a passenger vehicle in the inside lane. And just the opposite then would be a design vehicle in the inside lane and a passenger vehicle in the outside lane. When truck volume is very low, there should be consideration to allowing the design vehicle to command both lanes or basically design for a case one type roundabout. Here are the passenger car uh, dimensions from, again, auto turn. And you can see that the, the width of the vehicle is seven feet wide, uh, the outside of the body, and that the rear axle group is six feet.
Carrying on with the, the Florida DOT policy here, they're gonna, it is acceptable for the design vehicle path to encroach into the adjacent lane within the circulatory roadway. And we're gonna need to provide sufficient space for the passenger vehicle plus two feet of clearance between the two vehicles. So if we take a look at the, the vehicle here, the car as we just uh, saw was seven feet wide, but with overhang and turning that vehicle uh, actually is around eight feet. So if we have that eight feet in width plus two, the two foot offset gives us a 10 foot minimum, which means that if we have a, the design vehicle in the outside lane, not in any of the gutter, it is as long as we're providing this 10 feet of accommodation between the rear axle, or I shouldn't say, or the rear wheels of the of the truck, and that edge of pavement or edge of that curb and gutter, then we're going to provide uh, acceptable accommodations per the Florida DOT policy. So when we take a look at the, the different vehicles, it, there really shouldn't be any issues with cars making it in either lane as they go through through the roundabout. We're showing the truck in the right lane in this example, and you can see on the entry here that there is a gore pavement marking and that that truck follows along this paint line, goes through through the roundabout, provides 10 feet minimum here, has accommodations on the exit as well. And again, at the entry here, you can see that they're not uh, encroaching into the gutter as they go through. So this is uh, good accommodations for a truck in the right lane. Truck in the left lane, you can see that the rear wheels are using up the other portion of the, are using up the gore here. The front wheel is following along this curb line and not, not into the gutter as well. And as that truck goes through the roundabout, they are using the truck apron and this is an appropriate design. And then as they head out, on the exit, you can see that there's uh, providing enough width there for the truck not to encroach into the adjacent lane. And as I had mentioned, we're gonna need to be able to provide accommodations on the exits as well. We wanna make things as narrow as we can because we're trying to minimize the, the length of the pedestrian crossings. Here's an example of a truck with a gore and the width of the gore marking is determined by the entry lane widths and the swept pass of the design vehicle. So every roundabout is going to be a little bit different. And I've seen this a few times where is all the extra gore length necessary? Trucks are not over tracking in, in this area of the roundabout. So do you need to provide that extra width? Do you, why spend that extra money when it's not necessarily needed? On entries to roundabouts, we really only want to provide extra width where it is where it is needed. And this is a good example showing a truck being accommodated in both lanes, utilizing the pavement marking gore between those two lanes.